This is the video of tips and mistakes to avoid for numerical methods from C3. So first of all, um, it, when you're asked to write an expression in a specified form, look at the answer that they've asked you to write it as, because um, that you can get some hints about how to rearrange it based on that. So look at the answer, think about um, do you want a square root or do you want a cube root or um, look at the answer will give you an idea about how to rearrange it in the first place. Um, the iterative method, just remember that that will only work if the rearranged form and your starting value are appropriate. So for example, if you end up having to square root a negative number, then the iterative method won't work anymore. Or if you end up having to divide by zero, the iterative method again won't work. So just bear in mind that um, most, in most exam questions, you don't need to worry about that, but because um, they tell you the form and they tell you the starting value. Um, but just be aware, just be aware that the iterative method can sometimes go wrong. Um, when a question says using a suitable interval, so it says use it whenever you see that phrase there. First of all, look, um, you're going to use the upper bound and the lower bound. Then you're going to substitute that into the correct formula. Be really, really vigilant about that. Don't just randomly substitute them into, a, into some formula. Quite often I see students saying, oh, well, I was substituting the numbers in and they were, I was getting both positive values or be, getting both negative values. There was no change of sign. Well, that's because you substitute them into the wrong formula. Make sure you substitute them into the correct formula. So that's not the iterative one. That's not the one where it says x n plus 1 equals. Not that one. You need to read the question carefully and think, well, well what is it I'm trying to find here? If it's the y coordinate you're finding, then you're going to substitute um, them into the, into the y equation. If you're finding the turning point, then you're going to substitute the upper bound and the lower bound into your differentiated equation. So read the question very carefully and think, right, what is it, what is it that I'm finding here? Is it the turning point? Is it the intercept on an axis? What is it I'm finding? That tells you what, which equation you need to substitute your upper bound and lower bound into. And then obviously looking for your sign change. The other thing, just to point out on this again, it's a minor detail, you've probably seen this on um, mark schemes, is that it always says um, the sentence you write is there has been a sign change, and then in brackets it has, and continuous. Just to clarify that. If a function is, um, for example, if we have the reciprocal function, then I have got a sign change. I've got a sign change as it moves from negative to positive. So it's a sign change from when x is negative to x is positive. But that does not mean that there's a root in between there. Because if there is, this graph is not continuous. A sign change only implies a solution if you have a continuous function. So if I have a sign change here and here, yeah, there's a root there because it's continuous. If I have a sign change here and here, yes, there's a root there because there's a con it's continuous. But here, there's a sign change, but it's not continuous. So there's no root there. Just bear that in mind. Um, some things to avoid. Make sure you're in the correct mode in your calculator. So often I've seen um, students lose so, like three, four, maybe even five easy marks just because they're not in the correct mode in the calculator and they're just blindly substituting the numbers in without thinking about it. So make sure you're in the correct um, mode. Uh, and second, yeah, I've already covered this point. Make sure you're substituting the upper bound and the lower bound into the correct formula. So those are the two main mistakes to avoid in this topic.